Hi, my name is Judy Aaron, and welcome to another episode of What You Should Know. Today we're going to talk about Second Amendment rights, our gun rights here in Connecticut. Article 1, Section 15 of the Connecticut Constitution states, Every citizen has a right to bear arms in defense of himself and the state. I want to introduce to you today two members of Citizens, uh, Connecticut Citizens Defense League. Uh, my guests today are Scott Wilson and Lenny Benedetto. And so I will start with a question to you, Scott. Uh, introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Well, uh, my name is Scott Wilson, and I am the president of our organization, the Connecticut Citizens Defense League. And we're relatively new. We formed in February this, this year of 2009. And uh, we came together, the members, uh, including myself, came together after meeting online in some forums that discuss uh, firearms-related issues. And uh, there had been a slew of uh, anti-gun legislation that uh, some which got through the state legislature the following year and some which we narrowly defeated the following year. Or th those that fight for our rights uh, at the legislative level defeated some legislation and uh, you know myself after you know contemplating the the types of laws that are being passed I, I thought that uh, you know some more had to be done. You know, I typical NRA member. I send in my my renewal money every year, my fee to to be a member of that organization, and I I, I thought that uh, I I and others thought that uh, that enough wasn't being done at the state level here in Connecticut mm -hmm. to fight for our rights, mm -hmm. and that's when we we met each other and, and decided to form CCDL. Hmm. Okay, and how about you, Lenny? Uh, Lenny Benedetto, uh, <laughs> up in Stratford. I'm the vice president of CCDL. Uh, as with Scott, I, we all met on a forum and uh, we decided we'd have dinner just to discuss what was going on. Mm -hmm. About 20 of us showed up for dinner. Um, after the initial meeting of the 20 people that showed up for dinner, about seven or eight people decided that they would try to meet up again and offer it to everybody. And seven or eight people showed up and as of today, we have approximately 300 members in the organization. So we're growing like wildfire in the state. Wonderful. And are you in contact with other uh, sportsmen's clubs or uh, Second Amendment groups in Connecticut? Yes. Well, <clears throat> during our initial uh, form formation, uh, we've kind of quietly stayed a little bit below the radar because we didn't have uh, the media to contact a lot of people. We had to, you know, get together in, in committee and, and build a website and sneakily if you will, what, what we, we started out doing was forming the organization, first off, writing bylaws, crafting, figuring out where we were going to meet, filing papers for incorporation, opening bank accounts, all the things that a typical a small business would do to, to get set up. Mm -hmm. And while all that was going on, after our website was completed and, and launched, we started to reach out to some of the other gun rights organizations uh, that are out there, some of the sporting clubs. We had an opportunity several months ago to go to a large uh, Second Amendment banquet that hosts a lot of the uh, other organizations in Connecticut, and we, you know, we, we, our presence uh, became known uh, mm -hmm. widely at, at, mm -hmm. at that uh, venue. Mm -hmm. And so, what's what's the need for an organization like CCDL? Why why do we need uh, an organization to? Uh, to advocate for some of the the things that you're advocating for. Well, we're we're needed again, as I stated earlier. Getting back to the uh, the NRA and the national organizations, uh, they're out there fighting for national rights at the, at the state and local levels. The the uh, a lot of the bureau bureaucracy looks for ways to infringe on our rights at that level, mm -hmm. realizing that they may not be able to defeat us so much at the, the national level. They really try to clamp down as far as what we can buy, how much, how many guns we can buy, types of ammunition, uh, micro stamping, serialization. There's a whole slew of, of proposed legislation that we're looking at right now mm -hmm. that uh, as an organization that we're, mm -hmm. we sense it may be on the horizon that we want to mm -hmm. try to defeat. We don't also, we don't want to just defeat that type of uh, legislation. We also want to be able to 
affect some positive legislation down the road as well and, mm -hmm. and work with our legislators to to craft mm -hmm. some some mm -hmm. you know laws that work for the gun owners in this and state as well things that make sense you know you don't want to have legislation that's put in place that you know, or is a knee-jerk reaction to some episode that happens or, uh, you know, that it doesn't sort of make any sense in the long run. Um, knee-jerk is a perfect word. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. We see that every time there's a, uh, if there's an unfortunate mm -hmm. something that happens out there, mm -hmm. there you will see knee-jerk uh, legislation mm -hmm. proposed and, and mm -hmm. fast-tracked. Mm -hmm. and, and so what are some of the abuses uh, that are going on in the state with regard to gun legislation. Uh, there's, um, I understand there's some problems with uh, just different municipalities applying I'm, different <clears throat> standards. Actually, uh, yeah, right now um, the state of Connecticut actually has state statutes on what's required to get a permit to purchase a handgun or to carry a handgun. Um, you need the same thing for either which one you want to do. Uh, uh, essentially, what they want to do is is these towns out there are are going out and making up whatever they want to ask you. Uh, some towns are actually asking for credit references to they want you to sign away your life so they can check into your background in every aspect of your life, how you spend your money, what you do with your time, things of that nature. All of these little towns that are doing that, and some of your major cities are trying to do that too, are essentially going against the Connecticut statutes. And because of this, I, I actually have a, a request into the Board of Firearm Permit Examiners, and they are the, the people who essentially are the ones that, if you have a problem getting a permit for any reason, they'll hear your case and decide whether it, it it's, has, has any merit and as to whether or not you should be entitled to get that permit so that you can purchase a gun or carry a gun. Uh, I've asked them for a request to, to please check into this and find out what is going on with all these towns and if it is legal for these towns to ask mm -hmm. for credit references when you're applying for a permit to carry a gun. That's like asking for credit references to drive a car. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a license. You get a license and it says you know how to use it, you know what to do with it because of what the state says you have to train to do to get it. And there is, it's, a, it's an involved procedure. I mean, you Absolutely. don't just go and apply for a permit. You have to take uh, a, a safe uh, safety, safety class, mm -hmm. a safety course, uh, and you know, there's numerous uh, documents that you have to fill out. Yes, too. there are. What, so what they're really it's trying not to that do, easy. What they're really trying to do, Judy, is throw every obstacle they can to discourage law-abiding citizens of this state the right to bear arms in defense of themselves and state, as as Article One, Section Fifteen states. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and about how many permit holders are there in Connecticut? Do you know? There's a lot. Uh, there's, there's typically a lot more in Connecticut per capita than many other states because that permit to carry is also, your, in essence, your permit to purchase as well. There's mm -hmm. a lot of people that have permits. Many of them don't exercise the, the daily uh, carry aspects of that, that permit. So mm -hmm. a lot of people have their, their guns locked up at home in their safes. Mm -hmm. They use their permit to purchase. Uh, a lot of people do carry. More and more people are starting to carry on their persons. Uh, based on the uh, you know uptick, slight uptick in crime, and just the uh, concern, mm -hmm. realistic concern for safety, mm -hmm. understanding that the police have no duty to pre protect the individual. Say that again. The police have no duty to protect the individual. So what does that mean? If I call nine one one, that they're not obligated to come to my house. They'll come to your house, but if something happens to you in the interim, they're not at fault. There, okay. is, there, is, there is numerous Supreme Court cases that surround uh, mm -hmm. these types of scenarios mm -hmm. where they're not at fault. There's no liability mm -hmm. there on their half. If, you, if, they, if, if they don't show up or can't get to you on time or, or in their minds feel as though that it's not as pressing as you're making it sound or for whatever reason they don't prioritize your, your call to some type mm -hmm. of emergency status where you're in, in threat of harm, uh, they're, they're not at fault. So in, 